In this video, we're going to take a look at how to install Argo UML from GitHub. Argo UML is a nice tool to generate a lot of UML diagrams that are helpful when you're planning how to design some software. The distribution model has changed lately, though. It used to be you could go to argouml.com. Tigris.org, and you could download it from there, or you could use something called Java Web Start to start it from there. That website's no longer available, and instead, what they've done is they've moved the source code to GitHub. So you need to clone the GitHub repository and then build it, and then you can run it from there. Now, funny thing about Argo. If you go back over my lectures dating back to 2001, Argo was probably the most consistent thing I have ever used. It looks the same right now as it did when I used it in 2004. And so you might say, well, gosh, isn't there something newer? Well, sure. And you don't have to use Argo. You could use Visio. You could use Draw.io. There are a lot of different programs that could generate a UML diagram. One thing I really like about Argo is it's specially made for UML. So Visio, Draw.io, those are more special purpose tools. But if you're comfortable with that, hey, no problem whatsoever. One thing about Argo, though, is that the distribution mechanism has changed a bit. You used to just download it, install it, and run it. Now it's actually just been open sourced. And so what they do is they give you a GitHub repository where you can clone that repository, build it, and then run it. So to do this, you need to be comfortable with GitHub. You also need to have Git installed on your computer, and you need to have a Java JDK installed on your computer. All of these things we will eventually get to if you haven't done it yet. So if you want to follow what I've done, I encourage you to make sure that you have those items installed. There again, if this process is a bit too complicated, don't worry. Just use Draw.io, Visio, or any other kind of editing tool. But nonetheless, I'm going to walk us through this process for two reasons. Number one, so that we can get Argo set up. But number two, so that we can just become a bit familiar with how to clone an object from GitHub and then run it. Because this is something I'm seeing a lot more common these days, especially for developer tools. And the handy thing is, since you're actually building this project and running it, you have the source code. If you want to make any changes, have at it. So I will put this link uh, up in our project, but nonetheless, just GitHub Argo UML. If you search for that, you'll come to this page. I'm going to go to code, and then I'm going to hit the little clone button right here. Now, in a Windows-based operating system as I have, I'm going to go to just a programs folder. It will be similar in other operating systems as well. So Mac, Linux, you know, Git clone is, is pretty universal among these operating systems, which is pretty nice. First, let me make a folder where I can put Argo. So I'll simply say folder and then Argo, just like so. Enter that folder. Now, a neat trick in Windows. Take a look at what I've highlighted up here. You see I'm in C Programs Argo. I'm going to type CMD and hit Enter, and that will bring up a command window exactly to that path, which is really handy if you're nested maybe 12 subdirectories down. Now from here, assuming I already have git exe installed, I'm going to type git clone, and then I'm simply going to right-click, which is going to paste that repository URL. Hit enter, and now it's going to clone that repository, including all of the source files and also all of the build scripts that are required to build this tool. This will take just a moment. I'll fast forward a few parts through the video. And the project has now been cloned. So if I do a dir, I see that it has created an Argo UML folder. I'll cd into Argo UML. Dir again. And notice there's a readme. There's also a build.bat, which I'll use on Windows. There again, build.sh, use that on Mac or Linux, but going to give a very similar thing. This is actually going to take the source code and build it for us. Now, I mentioned Argo UML has been around for a while. So there's going to be a whole bunch of warnings that pop up here, which are simply deprecation warnings because it's using some older classes. The application will still run. Don't worry too much if you see a whole bunch of warnings. Let's go ahead and kick it off with a simple build command. Uh, once again, I'll fast forward because this is going to take a few moments. And now we have build successful. I could continue to navigate through the command line, but or I could use Windows Explorer. What we do want to look at is where it has placed this built Argo UML jar because it's kind of in an interesting location. Source Argo UML build build Argo UML. I don't know why they drop that in the source folder because typically you wouldn't put a built artifact in the source folder, but nonetheless there it is. So I click on Argo UML. I click on source, and then from here I can see Argo UML build. And 
build. And I see several options here. There's Argo UML jar. There's also Argo UML 2.bat. I'll go ahead and click on this. Again, I could run that from command line or run it just like so. And here we go, Argo UML is now loading. Now that we have Argo UML installed, we can take a look at how to create the UML diagrams like a sequence diagram or a use case diagram or a class diagram. I have a separate series of videos that cover those because this video is just looking at installing Argo UML. A class diagram is one of the most important diagrams to think about early in the design phase because it not only helps us to think about the classes that we need, but it also helps us to think about how they are organized, which typically will be in packages. Anything that responds to user events like a button click or a swipe will be in a UI package. That will typically call down to business logic, which we'll find in a service package. Business logic, a quick example of that. Think buy one, get one free when you go to the store. But what if you bought three items? What if you bought an odd number of items? What if it's buy one, get one free limit four? And you bought seven items. Which items are free? That's really buy one, get one free logic that would be business logic. Also, a lot of times video games, what happens when you shoot something? How does that work? How do you get more ammunition? That kind of thing is business logic. That will go in a service layer. Underneath that, you'll typically have a DAO or data access object layer, which represents anything that will talk to a persistence mechanism. Could be a database, could be a JSON stream, or anything else like that. And then we'll also have a DTO package, which represents any model classes, or as we call them in the Java programming language, any kind of noun classes, a person, place, or a thing. So the big value of a class diagram is it helps you to organize your thoughts and help someone else like me take a look at the design that you have and make sure that you're putting the classes in the right place and really that you're not duplicating efforts or making too much work for yourself. Because if we can figure that out early, we can make sure we're making the most of our time.